Hi friends, this is Sherry Rita from Wilmette Public Library. I'm getting geared up for the cold, cold Alaska type weather we're getting. And I'm also here to ask you, do you think heroes are born or made? Togo and Balto would probably tell you it's a little bit of both. If they could talk, that is. Togo and Balto were sled dogs, and they were heroic dogs. Now, Togo's story is the best one. Togo was born in Alaska, where his father was the lead dog on a sled dog team. And at first, his name was just Sogo, with an S in it, um, which means puppy. His owners, uh, the Sapalas, Leonard and his wife, they didn't think he'd ever grow up to be a sled dog. He was this really tiny little puppy. He only grew to be about 48 pounds ever. And instead of this beautiful black and white husky coat, his coat was black and brown and gray and always looked dirty. Uh, he was sick almost all the time. And when he wasn't sick, he was like show-offy and rowdy. So the Sapalas decided yeah, he's not going to be a very good sled dog. And they gave him away to this family so he could just have a nice life as a pet. Only thing was, Sogo didn't want to be a pet. <laughs> he wanted to be a sled dog. And here's where I think he began changing his name from Sogo, which is puppy, to Togo after an admiral. Because just a sh few short weeks after Leonard Sapala gave him away to that family, Togo jumped through their closed glass window and he ran mile after mile back to the kennel where he was born. So Paolo was impressed and he decided, okay, I'll keep this dog and he could just be our mascot or something. But Togo kept causing trouble. He kept breaking out of his kennel and chasing after the working sled dogs. And he charged at lead dogs on other teams as if he was trying to clear the way for his team. He even tried to lead the other dogs in charges against reindeer, you know, and that drew them off their path. He was just a pain of a dog. Sapala couldn't control him by barking orders. Get it? Barking? <laughs> by any kind of orders. He couldn't control the dog. So finally, he put him in a harness at the back of the pack just so that he could like keep him in one place. But you know what? As soon as he got into the harness, Togo calmed down. He ran every bit as hard as the fastest runners. In fact, he went 75 miles in his harness on the very first day. He did so well that by the end of the day, he was sharing the lead position with Sapao's best dog. So Togo went into special training and he became the lead dog by the time he was five. He became a hero soon afterward. Because in 1925, Alaska had an epidemic. An epidemic is like a pandemic, but in a smaller space. They had a diphtheria epidemic, and there was no cure for diphtheria uh, or vaccine for diphtheria back then. Um, but there was a medicine you could use that sometimes helped. Um, doctors in Alaska ordered like 300,000 uh, units of a serum that would help people in Alaska. But it could only travel by train as far as Anchorage. Um, and then after that, they'd have to rely on dog teams to carry it 674 more miles, up to all the way up to Nome, Alaska. So Togo and Sapala traveled 260 miles in three days to, to pick up the serum. They went more than 80 miles a day, even though it was negative 30 degrees. And with the wind chill, it was negative 85. On their return trip, the temperature dived to negative 40. And that's not even with the wind chill. The wind picked up to 65 miles an hour. I don't know, it must have been like 90 or 100 below zero. With wind chill, the team made it across open ice and up a mountain that was 5,000 feet tall. They made it to their delivery point and they passed on the medicine to another team 
Charlie Olson and his dog Balto, who ran the last 55 miles and delivered the goods. Balto and Togo were definitely heroes. For a time, they were famous. They got medals and parades, and the city of New York erected a statue, a statue to Balto, who's a good dog, right? The dogs performed on vaudeville. They were canine celebrities. And then after a while, their fame wore off. They had sold to a freak show in Los Angeles where they were neglected and ignored and mostly forgotten. But then a former athlete from Cleveland rediscovered them and he helped them find a new home. He uh, helped them retire at the Cleveland Zoo where they were welcomed with a big parade and given a beautiful home into, in which they could live out the rest of their lives. Famous? Yeah, they were famous for a time. But even if no one had ever found out, Balto and Togo would have been heroes. They delivered more than 300,000 units of life-saving medicine. They helped to stop an epidemic in its tracks. Togo and Balto were unique dogs with unique talents. But what made them heroes was the way they came to the rescue when we needed them. They were two of humanity's very best friends. Who's a good dog? Togo. And Balto, too. <laughs>